Hi everyone, this is Turan Khan here. I'd like to introduce you to a few programs that I use for my Anycubic Photon Printer. This will help you with hollowing, repairing, and adding supports. So, without any further ado, let's get on with it. The model we'll be using today is by Duncan Luca. Links will be below. And we'll load up the 3D Builder and load in the object. Notice the red box around the object, denoting that there is an error in the model, as you can see on the arms. So we'll click on that, and then click here to repair the model. And uh, we'll shall see soon, there we go. All nice and repaired. Then we'll uh, go up to save, and we'll save this out as an STL file. I'll uh, also rename the file before I save it out. That way we've always got a backup of the repaired model. And once that's saved, I'll uh, click on the rotate button and uh, rotate it 90 degrees. Or you can enter the value down here. Then I'll raise it from the bed. Now if you click on view you can actually disable the uh, floor so you can actually view underneath the object. I'll now check the scale of the model to check and see if it's uh, the correct size to fit on the build plate. I'll actually make the model 120mm tall and then check the, uh, the sides to see if it'll actually fit on the build plate. Which this model will quite easily. Then I'll uh, go ahead and save the file out again. So now I'll show you how to hollow out the model in 3D Builder. Uh, please bear in mind that uh, it's a very blocky hollow that it does. So we'll go up to Edit and then click on the hollow. And we'll set the wall for 1mm. And whilst that's working, um, this method is ideal if you're just going to paint the model anyway. But if you're going to keep the, the models actually clear, so that you can see through them, it will show through and look very blocky. And uh, as you can tell, once I actually turn around, you can see the blocks there. I'll save this model out again afterwards and we'll load up Mesh Mixer and show you how to hollow in there. So the first thing we need to do is import the model again. And if you notice the size is 33 meg at the moment, the main reason I don't actually use MeshMixer is it takes up a lot of power on the system and uh, can take some time. With the model loaded, you can see in a moment there, this is where the errors were, nice and fixed. So we shall head up to Edit and then Hollow. And you'll see that the default offset is actually at 2mm. We will change this down to 1, knowing that if I do reduce the model by 50% I'll still have a 0.05 wall on the actual model, which will be handy. So we'll update. And uh, I don't bother generating the holes here because sometimes it gives artifacts in the model. And uh, so we'll just click accept. And then go down to export. Now, one of the problems with exporting the STL here is that this file will actually be very large, so it'll be about 192 meg. So we'll just rename this and then save out the file. Then we'll go back to 3D Builder again. Then load in the file again, and as you can tell, yeah, it's 192 meg. So we'll load this in, and then we'll make our holes manually, and then save the model back out again afterwards. So first thing I need to do, as you can tell, the model is still repaired. It's nice and smooth in there. So then I need to click on cylinder, shrink it down to the size. 
I'm going to give this a 10 millimeter hole at the base and then move it into position and make sure that the cylinder is actually passing through the hole model and so that you're actually going through the, set, the walls so that when you subtract it you'll actually get a nice clean cut going through the model Okay, we'll head up to edit and make sure that the icon is actually selected and then click subtract. That will uh, remove the cylinder from the actual main model, making a nice smooth hole. And as you can see on the inside of the model how smooth it is with the mesh mixer so that if you were doing this in clear resin you will actually get uh, a nice finish then uh, we will save the file out again and at this point I'll actually show the difference of the file format once it's saved there is 192 so we'll save the model out again Now I'll load up the uh, hollow that I did with 3D Builder to show you the difference and I'll show you that as well the size difference of what it's just saved out and as you can tell we're at 33 meg for the, uh, the bio hollow now rather than 192. And as you can see on this one the, uh, the Minecraft blocks on the inside and you will be able to see them visibly with uh, clear resins so only use this if you're going to paint the actual model itself okay now that we've uh, loaded up B9 Creator we shall now load in the actual model that we did before And again, because I actually done the walls at one millimeter, I can now halve this down to 50%. Knowing that uh, when the model's printing, it will actually give me a wall of 0.05. I'll uh, make the model actually seven millimeters off the base. Then click on supports. I'll select the light supports then I'll set the length to 1 mil this will give it a nice firm base to, to hold on to the build plate then I'll look for these little islands that you can see and place the thin supports in as many areas as I can remember you don't really want it sticking through the model so you can use the modifier to move them about and uh, I shall continue to add these supports around the model looking for all the little islands that you can get with this line that comes up on as you scroll up and down through the model uh, you'll also get this with the photon slicer as well just that some of us prefer to use different tools for putting supports on. There are a few other programs out there that I haven't tried yet, but at the moment I'm quite happy with the B9. For fine tuning anyway. So I'll go through this quickly and skip the, uh, the rest of them adding the supports. You get the general idea from here. And then I'll show you on the medium supports what they're for. Okay, now that we're happy with the placement of the, the, the light supports, uh, we'll start at editing and adding the, uh, the medium supports, which are basically for, as it states, supports. Um, so we'll go back down to medium and then again select the bottom and then alter that to one again. And 
put a lot of it around the base just to make sure that it's nicely stuck down and plus these areas are easier to clean so that when we remove the supports that uh, it'd be a lot easier to clean up you'll also notice that some of the supports on the back there aren't quite set properly we'll alter them in a bit and uh, see if we can side them up and give them better placements So that's the base done and now we'll try and put supports in places that are easy to clean or easy to hide I'll uh, remove that support in a moment and add one back into the same place should put a few around here places that I can actually hide We'll put some on the arms near the base just to give it a bit more support. I'm trying to avoid the supports on the front because that's the part that we'll actually be seeing. It's always best to put your supports somewhere that's easy to clean. Now the amount of supports that you use, that's down to prep, you know, like your own decision. Obviously the more supports you use, the more resin you use but uh, the less supports you use the more chance it's going to move about uh, and detach from the bed and the last thing you want is for that to happen uh, i try and avoid putting them at the front of the model because that's the area that you're going to see if the model is actually at a 45 degree angle laying towards its back you, you use a lot more supports but the print time's faster whereas having it like this i use less supports but the print time for the model is a lot longer and uh, you know it's pros and cons whichever way you go um, do you want to use more resin for the supports and put a faster print time or do you want to try and save on resin and you know you're not too mired about an extra couple of hours onto your print time Okay, I'm not too happy with the supports around the neck at the moment, so we'll go up to modify and we'll try and get them a bit more further away from the actual model and hopefully easier places to clean. Okay, I'm not too happy with this one at the back. I think it's no matter as well I try and get it, even though I do eventually manage to find a spot, I still think it's too close to the model to to risk. So I think I end up deleting this one. Yeah, I'm not happy about how close that is. So that's that one deleted and now I just need to uh, sort this one at the back. Some of them can be tricky. Yeah, I mean, at the moment I'm trying to hook this one onto any part of the model so that I can get the bottom one attached to the base. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky to try and grab hold of. Again, I managed to get the one that was attached to the top, but I managed to find a place to put it. And now the annoying part, trying to grab that one and get it actually attached to the floor. And now I'll try and place it back underneath, back to the point of where it was. And 
and I think I'm happy with that as long as it's touching. Then I have to go back to the bottom again because I've modified it and then turn the base back into one. Okay, I seem pretty happy with the supports there. So what we'll actually do now is uh, go to the export and then save the file out as an STL file. Next, I'll load up the uh, slicer software for the photon and load in the previous model that we did, showing basically how to add supports with the slicer. So we'll load in the first model and then click on, on the model, raising it from the bed by five millimeters, then clicking on to supports and then clicking on auto. This will give a quick support system, but as you noticed from the previous part of the video, that all the key areas that need support aren't actually supported. But you can go in manually and add them areas to here, here, and here, and everywhere else that you saw me placing before. So I'll load up the actual one that we've added supports to. And then turn the actual model around so that during the time lapse you actually get to see it. And then we'll hit the slice button. Don't worry about these settings, I'll change them now. Uh, bottom exposure time at 40. And we'll change the layer thickness as well to 0.05. And then slice. Always important afterwards to check through the slicing by clicking on show preview. Then expand the screen and run through the slices, checking that the walls are of all decent thickness. happy with that so I'll start up the time lapse for the, the printing and uh, we had a slight problem during this with the software uh, the camera froze so we didn't get all the time lapse of the actual print and then when I actually got around to painting the model the time lapse from painting the model also failed but I do have pictures of the model completed which I'll include at the end of the video um, basically, after it was printed, I threw the model into some IPA, gave it a clean, removed the supports, gave it another dip in IPA, then washed it with so warm soapy water to clean off the IPA from the model. Then from that, straight into curing, and then from curing, I, I painted the model. Now, I hope this was a some help to some users. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe. Expect many more videos coming out soon based on the photon and uh, hopefully catch you again soon.